Hello and welcome. This is Rufalmonger, my friends. In today's video, we're here to talk about the future of Dragon Ball Fighters. That is because up until recently, we didn't even really know if there was much of a future for Dragon Ball Fighters. Many of us, honestly myself included, kind of thought Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta was effectively the end of the game. Yeah, people could still play the game, but that was the end of content for the game. And we now know, of course, naturally, that is incorrect. If somehow you've been sleeping under a rock, they did announce the new version of Android 21 will be the latest character for Dragon Ball Fighters. This is Android 21 with the lab coat. So you'd have to assume she'd fight with like a more science slash tech style. So given that we now know there's at least one more character coming for Dragon Ball Fighters, you'd have to assume, well, they can't just stop just there, right? So there's more coming. And this was indeed confirmed by the New Year's weekly Dragon Ball news segment, where on the official Dragon Ball website, they covered a lot of franchises of Dragon Ball and what to expect in 2022. A massive year of new goods and games. And sure enough, Hiroki-san, who is the main producer on Dragon Ball Fighters, was there. And yes, she confirms that there will be even more Dragon Ball Fighters in 2022. Stating, you know, 2021 was a good year for Dragon Ball Fighters, and sure enough, right, we got Season 3 and all the crazy stuff along with it. And they will continue to be powering up Dragon Ball Fighters in 2022. And hope you join us all for another year. Now, to me, this reads at the very least that we'll have a Season Pass 4 for Dragon Ball Fighters. We have the Android 21 character joining us, and I can only imagine that's not the only character, right? Come the time she gets her own proper trailer, we might be seeing exactly this. The opening for a Season Pass number 4. Because simply, I don't think they're just going to do a singular character and then just walk away from the game. This, to me, is perhaps the most likely outcome of what we can expect for Dragon Ball Fighters in 2022. And with that, if we're adding more characters, you have to expect probably more than likely another major balance revision. Now, will it be the size of the Season 3 patch? That's probably a little bit more difficult to tell. Uh, obviously, lots of changes, and this has happened throughout the life of the game, right? The first major patches of the game radically changed the game, then they had another major patch that radically changed the game, then they had another major patch that radically changed the game. The one thing that they have been very willing to prove over the life of the game is they're willing to patch stuff in a way that changes everything about what you know and your preconceptions about what the game is all about. Think about where the game is now today versus where the game was at launch, right? Outside of sharing the same characters, they might as well not even be the same game. That is how much the game has wildly changed from then to now. So I think these are the safe bets. Basically a full-on Season 4. Both Season 4, a Season Pass number 4 with new characters, and a full-on Major Balance patch. Who will the new characters be? Hey, who knows, right? You can throw whatever to the wind, we don't really know till we find out. So if we can potentially expect more characters and more patches, that's great. But what about the big one people talk about all the time since the very beginning? And that being Rollback Netcode. If you're unaware, Arc System Works, the developers of Dragon Ball Fighters recently retrofitted rollback netcode into BlazBlue Central Fiction and will also be doing so for BlazBlue Cross Tag Battle in the near future. These are older games, yes, but still, they did exactly what people want, right? They took the game that had delay-based netcode and put rollback netcode into it. Most famously done for Mortal Kombat X by NetherRealm Studios after the first year of the game, they had delay-based and they retrofitted the rollback netcode into it after that point. It's proven now multiple times over. It takes time and it takes money, yes, but it can be done. Now, will it happen for Dragon Ball Fighters after all this time? And I still unfortunately think the answer is no. For Mortal Kombat X, that was NetherRealm's time and money. For Blaze Blue and Blaze Blue Tag, that is Arc System Works' time and money. For Dragon Ball Fighters, it would be Arc System Works' time, but not Arc System Works' money. The publisher of Dragon Ball Fighters is Bandai Namco, and they basically have exclusive rights to all things Dragon Ball when it comes to video games. And Bandai Namco pays Shueisha, the owners of the Dragon Ball franchise, IP, all that kind of stuff, a very pretty penny to have those video game rights. If Dragon Ball Fighters was to ever have rollback netcode, basically Bandai Namco would have to pay Arc System Works to implement it into the game. 
And while we don't have exact numbers, uh, apparently it would be pretty substantive as far as the amount of money goes. Now, Bandai Namco already pays for everything else, right? You know, like pay them to make the game, pay them to make new characters and DLC, all that kind of stuff. But that has a return, right? That has sales, that makes money. Now, when doing rollback netcode, that's obviously great for the player base, that's great for the community, that's great for the overall longevity of the game, but you don't exactly see a return in dollars. You can say it being there helps make the game more money, yes, but you don't see a direct return on your investment. And with exactly that, that's exactly why Bandai Namco probably will not pull out the money to pay Arc System Works to do the work. Considering how they already treat their own properties, like Tekken 7, Bandai Namco simply just doesn't have the greatest track record when it comes to that kind of stuff. So no, I don't think we'll ever really be getting rollback netcode for Dragon Ball Fighters. Would absolutely love to be wrong, 100%, but I just don't think it's ever gonna be the case. Dragon Ball Fighters 2, yes, absolutely, 100%. That'll have rollback netcode, but that could be a very long time away. And it's kind of a double-edged sword because the longer they support Dragon Ball Fighters, that means the further and further away Dragon Ball Fighters 2 will be. One of the worst slash best case scenarios is it gets tons of support and becomes like the next Xenoverse 2 and goes for years and years and years, but then that means a lot of the fundamental problems will never be fixed, we'll never get rollback netcode, and that would be a shame. All that said, the immediate future of Dragon Ball Fighters, we won't have to wait too, too long, as they're doing another Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour this year. That will be a little bit later on, February 19th and the 20th. And the last time around, we learned quite a bit about what was coming up for Dragon Ball Fighters, so it's safe to assume it'll happen yet again this time. So if you're looking forward to Dragon Ball Fighters news and really all things Dragon Ball, this will be the place to be. At the very least, if we don't have her by that time, expect the Android 21 trailer by then. But hopefully it'll launch before this, because February is a while from now. Dragon Ball Fighters turns four years old this year. It's quite some time. Not a lot of fighting games get that kind of legs, and yet it did. And going by this trend, it looks like Dragon Ball Fighters will also survive into year five as well. I'm a little mixed on this because while I want to see Dragon Ball Fighters continue to succeed, I also sort of want to have them just kind of cut and just go straight to Dragon Ball Fighters 2. If not at bare minimum, just to get rollback netcode into the game, because it seems to be that's the only way it's going to happen at this point. But it's very obvious that, you know, over the years, a lot of the choices they went with originally in the game, they didn't really maybe think everything through fully, right? That's why the game has had to be changed so drastically over time from snapbacks, uh, fuzzies, all that kind of stuff, and Super Dash from day one to today is still a very uh, divisive mechanic, to say the least. And in a lot of ways, starting fresh with a new game kind of alleviates and fixes a lot of that. Now that we know so much more about how things turned out, there's a lot more general knowledge we can apply to a sequel. That said, though, that's just some of my wishes on it. Maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. You can post in the comments below. But otherwise, that's the end of the video, my friends. So not too much longer to wait for Android 21, hopefully. And we'll know a lot more about the future of Dragon Ball Fighters not too far from now. And otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some Dragon Ball.